Well, hey everyone, welcome back to my machine shop. So this project I'm going to be doing is building this uh, large wobbler steam engine here, okay? And uh, this is a project that I actually build with my students at the high school. And I thought it'd be an interesting little video to document and document different stages of the build. So today's video will be part one of a multi-part video series where we machine and uh, fabricate all these parts for this large wobbler engine. And today we're going to be concentrating on the upright here. Okay, this uh, aluminium upright. Now, if we have a look at the plan for the aluminium upright. Okay, now I will also make these plans available for free. I believe they're already on the uh, Facebook machinist group for free. But uh, anyway, I'll also put a link in the bottom of the description area. Okay, now the first mistake on the plans is obviously this is first angle projection. It should be third angle. Uh, projection okay so that's wrong it's actually drawn third angle I just ignore that for the sake of the video but all the measurements are in metric uh, this was an originally uh, a plan that another company had done and it was all in Imperial so I redrew it myself in my own CAD software and uh, converted everything over to metric and made it into a metric project so if we look at this upright today guys the plan stipulates 38.1 by 38.1 square aluminium extrusion unfortunately uh, I couldn't get that size I could get 40 by 40 uh, and it's saying that because it's just extruded um, it's roughly about 39.5 or something like that 39.6 so this is a bit of scrap piece we had left over and I thought I'd use it so the plan stipulates for it to be 190.5 millimeters long uh, my parts only 180 and I'm not going to worry about that because I've got plans at the top here I've got room to move you can see this gap here, so I'll lose a bit of that gap and the top of my piston should be flush, you know, all things considered, fingers crossed, all right? So let's get stuck into it. Now, for the first operation for this part requires this square section aluminium being faced either end, uh, centre drill, drilled and tapped. Now, I could do all these operations in my milling machine because I have a horizontal spindle. However, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to take you over to my Colchester lathe swap out the three-jaw chuck for a, for a four-jaw chuck and do it that way. But this is so I wanted to show you because this is another way you could have done it today by turning the vise around at 90 degrees and facing it all with a horizontal spindle. Well, the first job on the Colchester is actually removing the three-jaw chuck and, uh, and that involves undoing all, you know, the cam locks here and giving the chuck a little bit of a nudge with a soft face mallet. So let's get into that now. We'll just crack these cam locks and bring them to their unlocked position. This spindle has three cam locks. Uh, I know some have others, some have spin on chucks and that sort of thing. Right, so those cam locks have undone. Uh, one little gentle whack with my soft face mallet here, which is actually a, a dead blow mallet or dead blow hammer. You can see I've put some plywood down here on the bed to protect the ways, and that's a neat little trick. And just in case the chuck falls off and hits and it doesn't damage the bed, all right? So I like to hang on to it, just quite one little sharp blow. And you can see now that that's broken the cam lock. Now I'm trying to watch the camera here, but I'm just gonna bring this off and sit it. So I've moved the three door chuck out of the way. And as you can see, when I brought it out, I dropped a lot of chips. There was lots of chips uh, stuck up in here. And you can actually look at the spindle nose here. You can actually see there's some chips around here. So what I like to do is that just give it a little bit of a courtesy flush with my air gun. And give that a, a nice clean and a wipe down inside and out. And I'm rather happy with my old Colchester. It, it, uh, it appears that it hasn't had much work. Even though this was an old school machine, it came from Western Suburbs College here in Melbourne. Uh, it hasn't got much damage around here, which is... Uh, Quite surprising, to be honest. Uh, usually most school machines have had a good old flogging. So I think this could have been the instructor's machine. I'm not sure. Uh, once I've given that a wipe, guys, I'll just run my fingers over that as well. Don't forget to give it a wipe also. Give it a bit of a clean. This one was white when I first pulled it off, so it should be right to go, but won't hurt to run my finger around there. Up we come. get uh, one of the cam lock to the half position just to hold it in place. I just thought I'd touch base on this topic while I'm 
tightening up this four-door chuck, uh, always ensure that check your cam locks to make sure they're in the lock position. Now, I have stumbled across, as a high school shop teacher, I have stumbled across uh, students who have changed the chuck. Um, either they've forgotten to tighten it or they've deliberately left it loose for the next uh, student. And uh, I try to teach this and so make sure you check your cam locks, make sure they're in the lock position. And occasionally it doesn't actually hurt to actually put your um, tool in there, your spinner on there or whatever it is, and just make sure they're tight. But just a quick visual will ascertain whether they're locked or undone. Right, so I've got the, uh, the square aluminium uh, bar stock in the four door chuck. I've got a couple of old brass shims here just so that I don't mar the part when I tighten up on the jaw. And uh, so I'm just using the brass part like a, like a soft jaw contact so it doesn't mark that part. I've come in now with my parting tool and just roughly, like you would back in the day when you were adjusting the spokes on your bicycle wheel, just as a pointer. And you know, I'm pretty close there. I'm not too fussed about it. Uh, so this is all about facing and to drill that center hole. You can see I'm spot on. I'll take it a little bit closer so you can see. And I'm that close, it isn't funny. So you look, I'm not chasing hairs there. This is purely for a drill and tapped hole. And you know, the accuracy, it just doesn't require that level of accuracy. Do a full retract and plunge back in. And we're to our depth. So that was a Sutton center drill uh, used to find the center hole. Then I've just dropped in with a Sutton uh, drill bit, which is the right size for the eight point, it's for the eight millimeter tap that we're using here today. Okay, well I think it's uh, 6.7, the drill bit. And this tap's eight by 1.25. Now I'll put some oil on this tap so I don't break it off. Slow our speed down in the lathe. And I'll just let that tap pull its way through to get it started. I'm just chasing that last bit of thread up by hand. Okay, so we've faced the base, we've centered drilled, drilled and tapped. Probably just drop in and just uh, chamfer that a little bit. Now, if we take a look on the plan, the depth of that hole was supposed to be 35 millimetres. And uh, it says it here, drill 6.75 or 6.7, tap M8 by 1.25. So let's shove our vernier up the backside of that. The depth, now I'm trying to find not the point depth, but the shoulder depth, okay? And I'm a little bit long. So I'm at 37.3. Uh, look. I'm not worried about that. It's just a hole for a bolt to go through, okay? So that's fine. Right, oh, I've uh, swapped it around in the chuck now and put my brass shims back in there again to protect it. And let's face this opposite side. Got the part out of the lathe and uh, we're back over at the drawing board here looking at the plan. And we can see the total length of that should have been 190.5. I am undersized here. Remember, this was a bit of off cut we had at work, so 
I'm going to play around. It's about 10 mil undersize. And we need to mark these critical points. And the first one is where the crankshaft goes through. It's 60.33 millimetres. Remember, these were imperial sizes that have been converted. Uh, where we've got the um, cylinder pivot bolt, that's 139.7. And then we've got the two ports, so the uh, inlet and the exhaust port. Now, if we take a look at the sectional view over to the right-hand top side here, we can see that one hole is a through hole and there's two blind holes that join at 90 degrees. So the inlet comes in from one side and fires through this way here, okay, with a bit of a bit of copper tubing will come in there to that port so you can feed the, the engine to the side. All right, so let's lay up these uh, positions at the moment. So the first thing I'll be doing is finding the centre and scribing the centre line, finding those key points, okay, and then one on the side as well. Now, I've just set a punch those, however, I'll get it more ac accurately in the mill, but at least if I've got those markings there, I know that I'm correct in my numbers, okay? So that's the reason why I did it. I've got the aluminium upright in the mill vise chuck here and uh, clamped it up in, in place. I've got my Noga base bolted to the, or magnetised to the side of the machine here and I'm sweeping the top surface just to check that I'm not inclined or declined. Now what I did have to do was pack up one side a little bit with a piece of cigarette paper and I've noticed that I have a bit of a whoop in this part here but from overall from top to bottom it's, uh, it equals out. And we're back on zero here. Now to set up that back corner as a datum, I just use a bit of round bar that I had here, and it's exactly eight mil diameter. So when I touched off on the side here using my cigarette paper as a feeler gauge, if I split that in half, it's four. And luck would have it, my little milling machine, one turn of my wheel is four millimeters. Okay, so it works out really easy. If I set the zero, once I touch it, then move in four mil, you can see there that I'm right on that back corner. I need to go into the centre now, and to find the centre is 19.8 uh, millimetres, so which is roughly just under five turns to the handle. So that should have it right there on the money. Now we move up 60 millimetres on the other side. So I'm spot on, and uh, my previous centre punch confirms it. You can also notice that I've put a stop on the end here, so when I flip it over to the other side, it'll be, uh, make it a bit easier. Uh, like I said, this aluminium is very, very buttery, and care's got to be taken that you don't break the, the drill bit off in there. All right, so that one's done. Now, when I originally marked this out, I'm a little bit out on that line here, all right? Um, just to double check, I went right back to the start, touched off again, and calculated exactly up to here, which was 40 and a half turns, 
okay, to move it right up there. And I'm just a little bit out, so I'm just gonna take a bit of care when I spot drill this now. And I've got that spot on now. So I believe this hole from the plan, this is a through hole, and this one, this one only goes halfway. And it's a 3.9 something hole. So I'm just gonna drill it out four mil. Now I've got a little bit of run out on this drill. Uh, the shank's been eaten away. Don't have an, another four mil drill bit. The next size up is 4.2. I could probably use that and get away with it, but look, I'll persevere with this and hopefully it will uh, straighten up so it goes into the hole. This aluminium is very, very buttery. So just ensure that you, uh, it really would work better with flood coolant, but I'm just taking my time with it, just eating away at it slowly, just pet drilling, and just trying to pull those chips out and clean it. Occasionally they'll get stuck to the drill, so I just pull my little wire brush gently backwards on it, and I don't have to turn it off and I can keep going. Of course, if you're a beginner, always be careful putting your hand near a lives tool. That spinning around like that, it can uh, bite you, especially end mills in particularly. So please take care. Right, nearly through, quite a deep hole. And we're right through to the other side, which is good. So I've uh, set up my depth stop here and I'm starting on uh, 10 and I'll plunge all the way down to 32 and I've set up the stop uh, so I don't go too far. Let's have a look at this now and act. Now one of the good things about having a vice stop here is uh, the ability to just flip the part, rotate it and uh, you've got a register. So I know that I'm back in the right line. So I haven't altered the X location, I've just re-altered the Y to pick up on the center. I trust the dials more than my Marking out as I'm getting a little bit blind as I get older and I can't see that well. There we have it. Reset up my stop again. That should be 10 mil. I can feel it dropping into that hole actually. Right, if I just get my air gun now and uh, Blow in this hole. Yep, I know I've gone through the first one and I haven't broken. Right, I've got a bit of quarter inch copper pipe here that needs to be uh, loctited into the aluminium block here. And this is for the inlet, inlet tube, which we can hook up to compress there. Um, now this is a really old quarter inch drill bit, so it's a little bit blunt. I had to dig it out of a bucket <laughs> that I had because I predominantly use met metric over here in Australia, but anyway. Now I've got a little four millimeter chamfer and a mill in here that um, my good friend Michael Connor from Michael Connor Woodwork gave me, so thanks Michael. Um, it's a carbide tool. Now I know I shouldn't have it in a drill chuck, but I'm not taking that big a cut on it. Um, as you know, running end mills in a drill chuck, you just shouldn't do it. But that's given it a nice little bevel across each edge and it's just taken that sharp edge off it and I'm rather happy with that. Now with the copper tube I'll expand that a little bit and then glue that in because it was just a, a, tad, a tad loose okay. So that finishes part one today ladies and gentlemen. I'm, thank you for following on I hope you learned something. Uh, like I said the plans are in the description area of the video down below there'll be a pdf file there for you. Uh, part two we'll be making the piston all right so We'll see you later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.